Preventing rabbits from eating all your vegetables, combating the itch of poison ivy, and keeping your shears sharp. These are just a few reasons why having a bar of soap among your gardening tools is a good idea. While watching the wildlife in your yard is fun, some critters are destructive to gardens, whether you're growing flowers or vegetables. Deer, rabbits, birds, and bugs. It seems like they all think that the food in our gardens is as delicious as we do. If you want to deter any of those cute but pesky critters from chowing down in your garden, a bar of soap could be your answer. Some animals have sensitive noses, and the scent of a fresh bar of soap could be enough to keep them out of your plants. In this case, the more pungent soap, the better. So look for something like Irish Spring that is known for its potent scent. The fresher the soap, the better. The longer it sits out, the more it loses that initial powerful aroma. If your bar's scent seems to be fading, cut it into chunks to release more fragrance. To use it to keep deer away, you'll want to hang the soap from your garden fencing. While fencing may keep bunnies at bay, deer have a pretty high jump. Are you worried about soap suds after a rainy day? You can help contain the mess in a mesh bag. But the key to avoiding a mess in the first place is to shave a few pieces into the dirt every couple of days, rather than throwing full bars into the soil. From garden to home, soap may help keep bugs away. If you have fruit flies bombarding your indoor garden, you can defeat them with a bar of Irish Spring. If the bugs keep finding their way into your outdoor garden, it'll help too. You can simply leave a bar of soap by plants that are having the most issues with bugs, or if it's your home garden or a greenhouse being attacked, you can use the soap to coat doors and windows and other places where the bugs are getting in. It's made to be gentle, so it shouldn't harm your home. If you'd rather not rub soap into the wood, you can also try hanging it from a piece of string. Plus, having a bar of freshly scented soap around while you're gardening will also help keep the gnats and mosquitoes away from you, too. Be sure to check the bar every once in a while, especially after it rains, so you can replace it once it has melted away. Be sure to use bar soap, not dish soap. Dish soap is a detergent and can be harsh on sensitive plants. Bar soap is far gentler. All you have to do is lather up and gently rub that lather on your plant's leaves and stems. Not all bugs can be killed with soap. Only smaller bugs with soft bodies can be dried out to the point of death with this trick, which is why this works on aphids. It's also good when dealing with mites and whiteflies, but you won't have much luck battling those pesky Japanese beetles. However, you may be able to drown them in a bucket of soapy water. If you have a really minor case, you could go and you could just pick them off, and you could actually, if you drop in a bucket with some soap and water, It'll kill them. Picking beetles off plants with your bare hands may not be appealing, so you can also pour the water into a spray bottle and drench your plants with a solution. If you don't want to individually lather each infested leaf with soapy water, you can add bar soap to your insect repellent to fight off those nasty little bugs. Why do this? Soap is sticky, so mixing it with repellent or pesticide makes the agent stick better. This means you can kill a wider variety of pests than you would with a bar of soap alone. Plus, you don't need to add water in this case. so. The mixture will be more potent in its application. If you're serious about your garden, you probably have a composter or a compost pile. To fight off those annoying insects drawn to the bin, add your leftover chunks of bar soap to your compost. As an added bonus, it can also help fight off mildew. While there are plenty of biodegradable soap options out there, this is a great opportunity to use that sliver of soap that ends up left behind. It's too small to wash with, and no one wants to waste extra water to melt away that one little piece. This is where that compost bin comes in handy. In this case, don't don't toss brand new bars in, just the leftover pieces. However, ensure your soap has no synthetic dyes or fragrances, since that can compromise the pile. If you like using all-natural or sensitive skin soaps, you're good to go. These small slivers should take about six months to break down, so ensure you don't replenish them more than twice a year. Pulling weeds is one of the most tedious things to do when keeping your garden neat and tidy. It's also a task you don't want to skip for too long because those weeds can get out of control and choke out the plants you actually want to grow. Before using harsh chemicals in your vegetable garden, consider making your own weed killer using those leftover bits of bar soap. While some recipes use dish soap, we recommend avoiding that harsher cleaning agent and using something milder in its place. You can melt your soap in a pan on low heat, stirring often so it doesn't burn, a double boiler like those used in candle making is even better. Then, mix your liquidized soap with some white vinegar in a spray bottle. You'll want about one ounce of soap to one gallon of vinegar. Spray directly on those pesky weeds, not the plants you want to keep, because it will dry them out. To get deep into the roots of the weeds, pour the mixture directly into the dirt. 
While you're busy killing off the weeds in your garden, there's a chance you'll run into some peskier problems like poison ivy. If you had a run-in with any poisonous plant that leaves behind painful skin rashes, you could combat the burning and itching with soap, which is one more great reason to always have some bars of soap hanging out with your gardening gear. If you come into contact with a plant like poison ivy, wash the exposed skin right away. While some commercial products can help ease a tangle with poison ivy, getting some soap on it right away may help keep you from developing the itchy rash. That's because you'll remove the plant oil that causes it, nipping the problem in the bud. Rather than scrubbing, which could leave you with more pain, lather up your soap bar and lightly clean the area. Then be sure to get under your fingernails and clean up any tools that came into contact with the culprit. Once you're indoors, clean your clothing and take a shower. Just as indoor plants get dusty and need a bit of cleaning now and then, outdoor plants also get dirty and can sometimes benefit from a good washing. This is especially true with decorative, leafy plants in your flower beds or patio pots. Not only are clean plants healthier because they can absorb more nutrients when they're not covered in dirt, but regular cleaning will also leave them looking vibrant rather than dingy. Rather than dousing your whole flower garden with a ton of water, you can gently clean off leaves with some suds from your lathered up bar soap. Lather your hands and spread the foam onto the leaves, both on top and underneath. Once sudsy, gently wipe the leaves with a damp towel and let them either air dry or dry them with a clean microfiber cloth. Not only will this help your plants look vibrant, but it will also help control pest infestations. If your garden consists of any potted plants, you'll want your bar of soap on hand when it is time to do some repotting. When repotting plants, it may seem easier to dump out a dead plant and put a new one in its place without any sort of cleaning. After all, they're both plants and it's just dirt. Dirt, right? Cleaning pots is important because bugs can hang around in the traces of dirt left behind. The pot could also be mold contaminated if your plant died from root rot. There's also a chance that if you're using clay pots, the buildup of salt deposits can damage your plants by drying them out. Err on the side of caution and clean your pots with a bucket of water and some bar soap. It's just as important to clean off your garden tools after each use. To not spread bugs or diseases from one plant to another, you'll want to clean and sterilize your instruments after working with them. Regularly sanitizing them will also help prevent them from becoming dull or rusty, ensuring they'll last longer. Once you're done cleaning your garden tools, dry them thoroughly to prevent rusting. It's also important to keep the handles of your tools cleaned and dried. With wood-handled tools, clean them with a damp cloth and bar soap rather than submerging them directly in the water which can cause warping over time and will likely lead to future splinters. It's also a good idea to rub them with mineral oil afterward to keep them from drying out. Lubricating gardening tools, especially shears, is just as important as keeping your tools clean. While oil is often suggested for lubrication, you can also use a bar of soap. That way, you don't have to waste money buying multiple cleaning products. For this task, rub the bar of soap along the blades of your cutting tools, including spades and hose. The soap will leave a thin coating that won't rust, since you're not using liquid or water. The next time you grab your shears to trim, you'll produce a smooth cut. And since you're not using harsh chemicals, you don't have to worry about the safety of your herbs and veggies when it comes time to consume them. Before you start cleaning your tools, you may want to wash your hands. Just one more reason a bar of soap is handy in the garden. You don't have to dirty your door and faucet handles just to wash your hands, which allows you to enjoy your harvest faster, since you don't have a trail of dirt to clean. Some gardeners also suggest putting dry soap underneath your nails before gardening to prevent dirt from getting into your nails. It blocks the soil from going inside and will dissolve once you wash your hands.